Hi everybody, Gerga here. So today's example is going to be a football related one. First of all, I just want to show the fastest way to get from the iPads to Viscom. So basically the fastest way uh, to go from Procreate to Viscom if we prefer to sketch in that application. After that, we're going to do some like photorealistic renderings, visualize the, the idea in different color material. And then after that, I'm going to show some new interesting ways of exploring um, different uh, different variations, exploring different avenues and also creating our own like custom palette as well. So let's jump in. Feel free to grab a pen and follow along. Awesome. So first of all, we're going to open up Procreate on the iPad and grab our sketch. So in Procreate, we can find the layers panel and I can copy the layer over to Viscom. Now, if it's, uh, the drawing studio is up, I can click on this uh, uh, V icon here and edit. And here, here I find the paste option. And of course, if I have a keyboard with the iPad, then then I can just easily paste it by uh, Command C, con uh, Command V, or Control C, Control V as well. Uh, but this will be the fastest way to to get the sketch in the application. And that we got the sketch in. I can just click on the Describe button to have the first prompt that we can generate on top. So it recognizes this as a futuristic sneaker with exaggerated sole. Some of the other design features. What we can do here that usually helps a lot with footwear if we define a color and material as well. So if I say gray fabric. That should be uh, completely enough to create a nicer rendering overall. Now with the drawing influence, I can use 100%. This is quite a clean sketch, so I could lower it a bit and it would still stick to the silhouette shapes. But I, I like to just uh, like validate 100% drawing influence and what it looks if it exactly sticks to the sketch lines. First interpretations and I'm going to go with, uh, with this one. Uh, I like the way how it constructed, but I see areas where I will want to change some things. I'll add this to the canvas and I can just jump in with the brush tool and I can see that this area, I can just easily make it into some sort of heel protector here. So we might even want to introduce a contrast color. Let's make it, uh, let's make it blue in this case, create a new layer and let's finish this surface. Okay, nice. This can be a heel protector area and let's generate another rendering. We can slightly decrease on the influence. If you have already created the rendering, uh, then we can be much uh, more free to decrease from the influence and it will still keep it true to the original concept, but we can get like a bit more realism as well. So we can see here with the render, it will not sustain the colors. It kind of just implemented it into the rest of the aesthetic this way. Uh, this is also quite nice. So I might leave it that way. Uh, although, and we can also see the quality increase from the first rendering up uh, to the second rendering, we get much more details. I'm just going to add this to, to my layers. At the same time, I can also go back and hit refine as opposed to render and let's see how it does on this design detail. So if I want to stick it more so to the actual colors that I sketched in, refine would be the way to actually implement everything into the cohesive aesthetic. And this also offers variation. So refine can be cool for just offering alternatives at the same time implementing the design changes. So I can definitely keep uh, this one as an alternative. But let's go back to the previous one here. And what I'll also see is I want to clean up some surfaces since this is going to be like a, a sock type of fabric material here or like a knit material. I can just use simply the magic eraser, which is a very powerful function. I use it all the time to just get rid of a few things. For example, this thick line. And also here, if I want to have multiple areas magic erased, I can hold down option on the keyboard or it's uh, control, I believe. Uh, no, it's alt, alt on Windows devices. So I can hold down alt or option on Mac and I can just select different areas. So I just want to remove these seams here, material seams. Now, if I let go from option, it's going to remove these uh, different masks. If I want to be broader with this area, I can incorporate a broader area to fix the surfacing a bit more. Or like the material, but we are going to generate more and more, so it will not matter that much. Awesome. We got a clean base. And now what I want to do is I might want to just maybe lightly sketch some um, lacing uh, structure or like a lacing support. So I create a new layer and with this same color, I just sketch in basic indications. Escape resets the canvas. Uh, something like this should work fine. I'll get back from opacity. Uh, I'll go back to render and I just render with um, high drawing influence just to make it into the cohesive realistic aesthetic. 
Awesome. Now that we are satisfied with the overall shape, we can always create 3D models, of course. So that's what I'll, I'm going to do here. I can just click on add. Uh, let's make a 3D model out of it. Now I want to sort of like um, influence the overall appearance by reference images. So I'm just going to click on references. I already uploaded a few just like this one. I'm going to use this for the overarching aesthetic for the entire image. I can set, set it as a material here. I get back from the strength since it's uh, more of an abstract image uh, for, a, for a shoe concept and join influence wise, we can still keep it pretty high and the prompt can remain the same. I just sort of want to take advantage of the crispness we can get out of this material workflow. And I want to make it a, a bit more of a grainy texture. Yeah, and I, I want to increase the material quality overall on the image. There we go. Here we can see we get, we get some much, much nicer overall aesthetic and overall material grains. And then we got some like creative interpretations of these different materials and colors. So I will choose this one since we have a nice distinction between these elements. Actually, I will go with a, with a full gray one. It's like, this is like very clean. Uh, so I'm going to go with this full gray one because now I'm going to select the upper part of the shoe with the help of the auto selection tool. And usually with the auto selection, you can just like select an area, even if it's not perfect. You can always use the deselect or remove from selection button to, to remove, for example, these elements. And therefore you just define the area quite nicely. And for this one, I will upload a different material that is going to be derived from this image. This is a, a really abstract, very strong image once again. So I'll get back a bit from the strength. Maybe 65 could be good. And here I want to have like a patterned fabric. So I'm going to make it into a patterned fabric upper upper of the shoe. Drawing influence wise, we can get lower, especially when we have a mask, when we have a, a, a selection on the canvas. This means that we are forcing the rendering at a very small area. So we can be freer overall with the drawing influence. Since the silhouette will not change, we are forcing it with the mask. Uh, so we can leave it more freedom and still have like different variations with the help of it. There we go. Okay, that's uh, gonna be pretty nice. And we could just really accurately sort of change the upper part of the shoe with the, with the auto selection. And it has such a, a nice overall like fabric quality to it. If you use this material workflow, this is super interesting. Okay. I really like this one. Now want to see results, which are a bit more interesting. Now this is like a traditional concept with like the traditional uh, sole tooling here and the upper material. But now I want to explore something which is a bit more organic, which is perhaps 3D printed or manufactured in, an, in a different way. For that, I'm going to explore aesthetics with the help of the mix feature. You can find the mix feature at the workbench. So here, if I go out to the workbench view, you can find this plus icon here and I can bring in the mix block or the mix node. And let me pull in a few images to mix here. So basically my plan will be to create a custom palette with the help of mixing together different mood board images. So right now I have these three images that I like the aesthetic of. And if I start connecting these images to the mix block, first I connect this like footwork concept image. And uh, one thing to note is that the generated renderings out of the mix block, the aspect ratio will be determined by the first image that you connect to the mix block. So all the images are going to have this aspect ratio. And now maybe I connect this one and let's just try mixing with these two. By default, it's going to be a 50, 50 percentage um, in terms of mixing. So everything will be considered with equal proportions. So now we can see these uh, interesting concepts of like a footwear design and this like lamellas together. And yeah, it's very hard to describe, but, but we can just feel that it's kind of the combination of these two images. And now let's connect the third image, which also is going to reinforce on this lamella effect, but it will introduce this very nice, like a gradient to it. So I connect it. Yeah, let's move this aside. Awesome. Now that I got these three images blended or mixed together, we got a really nice palette actually, because these images are quite cohesive in style and they reflect sort of the mood board and the, the, the visual effect that I was looking for. Lamellas, like footwear concept, it's like a 3D printed type of organic uh, material that I was looking for here. And so we can actually just train a custom palette on it. So I can just select these images and here you can find the create palette icon. 
it's going to put it into this palette box. You can just refresh the page if the images are not appearing. Uh, but after that, we can just click on train. At the same time, I can also give it a name. This can be like organic footwear. So organic footwear one, uh, the palette is training here. Awesome. So now let's revisit the original shoe concept that we had here. And I can generate the renderings at the workbench view here. So I'll just connect a prompt block to it. And now I can select from the palettes drop-down menu, the organic footwear one that we just trained here. And now I can set a range for patch generation. This 175, 50, 25 could be a good way of just exploring a certain palette, testing new palettes, for instance. So here, as I clicked on a palette, it already included some descriptors. This can be a good prompt to use. And on the first go, I will render on top of this with the help of the palette. But refining with the palettes can be a very interesting design exercise because it's going to keep it true to the overall aesthetic, but we can set the amount, how much we want to deviate towards that newly created aesthetic. So here I'm just rendering, but I can show a way of how it's going to refine as well. So I click to refine with the same range, that can be good, but we are more interested at the lower percentages. So maybe I just do 55 here, 35, and maybe let's do a 30. So as I start refining here, it's going to bring out these lamellas and more organic material features. Essentially, it's trying to build from the original rendering, but it's just going to abstract it towards that direction, which can be a really interesting effect to, to play with and work with. And with the, with the color ways, how we could render this in, it's already super nice. And since it did not really construct it that many, um, many of these material qualities, I can just simply go inside here and then do the refinement. So go to refine, let's get it down to like 40%. And let's generate now on this newly created rendering to just explore this 3D printed lamellas effect here. And here, let's see, this can be a, a cool step towards the right direction. We can be a bit more subtle. Maybe let's start with 60% drawing influence. And we can see that it now started implementing and started refining towards that aesthetic. And essentially we just brought out a lot more material quality here. Now, if I get back to the original one, I actually made a different version with lighter color base using different reference images out of the original shoe concept. But here, if I start refining with the same palette, uh, the results can be even crazier. I found that the, the lighter upper and the overall lighter aesthetic of this image helps in this palette. We can see that now this super organic coral-like aesthetic is going to come out pretty nicely with the lamellas. Yeah, this one is a, this is a crazy organic little thing that could live in the deep seas uh, probably. And I can just keep refining and set the strength of this effect with the help of the drawing influence slider. And basically this was the way what I wanted to show to how to get, in this case, from something that is manufactured in traditional ways uh, up to something which is like a more like a 3D printed or super organic material. And of course we can also create 3D models out of this. And these, one, these will be the ones that will be much harder to actually 3D model because of these undefined and random organic surfaces. And that's where, that's where our 3D can also offer a lot of value. And now we got this very cool uh, 3D model here. Yeah, so I wanted to end it here and just wanted to uh, show you this really cool new way of like exploring and to create a custom palette out of the previous re research that we done before maybe, how we can like multiply on this effect and how we can get a cohesive aesthetic that we can use to train a palette on that we can later use to either render in this case, it's much more powerful that we could refine our already created renderings here. So we can just sort of push the aesthetic towards that organic look. But that's what I wanted to cover here. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions regarding the features and I'll see you next time. Take care.